and we're back um, from the Volks Hotel in Amsterdam. This is ThinksCon 2017. Uh, we've got a new guest, uh, Mara. Um, you, have, uh, you gave a talk here this afternoon. Uh, what was it about? Uh, well, thanks for having me here. Sure. Um, I'm totally loving Thanks Gone this year. Um, my presentation was about how citizens can harness the potential of the Internet of Things to address urban issues. And also, I discussed some issues such as data sovereignty, how are we going to ensure that people um, own their data and they can share their data under conditions that they see fit and the creation of uh, legal protocols, for example, uh, data cooperatives that allow people to come together as a collective to use the data coming from the Internet of Things or any data that they produce under, um, in, in a way that they feel, makes them feel empowered rather than farmed for their data. So there are big questions, but how, how do you do that? How do you, as, as a simple citizen of Amsterdam, how can I be part of this? How can I get my data back? Uh, how can I be made aware of uh, these kind of things? Well, in, in 2018, in May 2018, we will have the new uh, general data protect protection law at the European level. And I think that we are not ready yet to, to this is an amazing legal framework. It's very empowering. It recognizes the right of ownership of your data. It recognizes the right of portability, which means that you can go to an online service that collects your data and say, hey, this is my data. I want it because I want to port it, to take this to another system. And they have to give it to you in a readable um, uh, format that is compatible with other standards. So this is very powerful because it would allow us to, for example, decide together that we want to find the cure of a disease so we could all share X uh, type of data with a public institution and put some pressure or, or set as a condition that the result of the research is open source and uh, you know uh, loyalty free and so on but to create this, this amazing empowering ecosystem, we not only need the legal framework, but also we need the standards, we need the licenses, and we need awareness. Like you said, we need to produce a lot of awareness so that people understand, that people know that they own their data and, and, and know how they can use it and what platforms are more respectful of their And we also need rights. technology, uh, and that's not there, is it? Well, uh, knowledge. You yeah. said? No, the, oh. the, uh, the software. Uh, um, oh. Because it, um, just as a simple citizen, how can I just, under these new regulations, how will I be able to be in control of my data and to port it to another uh, uh, platform or whatever? Exactly. This is all to be done. And this is why in we, one year. Need, we need to start... We, we need to start a while ago. <laughs> but just putting into place the technologies and the institutions and the knowledge that is required for this to be enacted, really. And so a lot of the discussion this morning was about uh, cooperatives or new institutions that we can create. But also I think there's a massive need to design systems so that we can embed these values from the beginning. For example, lowering the barrier of entry to the Internet of Things, making it really easy for people to understand what data is being collected, what are your, the risks of sharing that data, and what are your options in terms of licenses for sharing this data, and also to use new technologies that blockchain, smart contracts, so that you can have access to data regarding who is accessing your data and, you know, in, in an open ledger. So all this needs to be put into place so that we can really um, make the most out of this regulation. So um, are the other citizens, apart from me, are they ready for this? Because this also sounds like a lot of hassle. I mean, I've got to worry about what data is shared with whom every day, give rights to this person, uh, reject rights to the other organization. Uh, I mean, it sounds like quite a medical, sounds like a day job. Yeah. <laughs> I think that as we move towards a data economy and as we begin to realize the massive potential that there is behind sharing our data, but also the massive risks there are, there is a need to, A, on the side of the designers and technologists, to design for this awareness, to design for empowerment, so that it's not a problem for you to have to participate actively 
in, in, in what I call a, a data democracy, you know, voting on, on how your data is used and so on. So this, we, we need to lower the barrier to, to enter to these systems so that they don't become a headache for people because that is the trick. When it becomes a headache for you and you just don't want to engage, you disengage with it, you open the door for nasty things to be done with your data. Because that happened in the past when nobody read the, uh, uh, the service yeah, agreement, exactly. so they did tick the box and they said, uh, give it to me. Uh, um, they filled out the form and gave all the data that uh, were requested because otherwise you couldn't use the service. But now uh, you have to think uh, with everything, uh, uh, whether you want it, uh, uh, what an organization is going to do with certain data of yours, uh, are you going to give them the ability to use it for a day, an hour, a year, uh, uh, you forget about it. That uh, um, still sounds um, like, like well, something that not everybody is waiting uh, for. It is a fertile ground for, for researchers and for designers and for entrepreneurs uh, to be assessing these, uh, these needs, citizen needs and expectations to design better systems. For the last four months, I've been running co-creation workshops with citizens to try to understand how much they know about their data and, and how should such systems be designed. And I discovered some very interesting things, although it is very early um, stage. But I discovered, for example, that there's a massive lack of awareness. So we need to do a lot of evangelizing and, and campaigning and, 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 and uh, awareness and discussions. But then the second thing is that there is a big change between people's individual perceptions or desires of how to do with their data and their collective uh, perceptions. So for example, you might find a lot of citizens that say, I don't mind selling my data, my social media data, because you know, I'm already giving it away to Facebook, whatever, if they give me some money, da da da. But then uh, when they come together as a collective and start discussing with others, others go like, wait a minute, but like by exposing your browsing data and your social media data, you might be exposing other people's as well. So um, let's talk about this. And other people may say, I don't want to share my health records data, my, uh, my DNA data. And other people may say, look, my family has a history of cancer. If we all shared our uh, DNA data, we could come together with, with an open source um, cure for some of this guy. And then people change their minds. So I think that this is very much a democracy where you need to have stages of personal, individual decision making and voting, but also you need to uh, create opportunities for more, uh, more social debate and collective awareness about how we do, how we manage this as a collective also. So during these workshops, were there, were there people actually scared about the, 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 the amount of data that was actually already collected about them? They were like, uh, so we have two very clear uh, extreme positions. Uh, there are some people who are really freaked out because they are aware of how much data is being collected and they feel completely disempowered, like they don't know where this data is, uh, under which conditions this data is possibly being sold to other companies and so on. And they're really scared, for example, whether uh, insurance companies are going to start charge, charging them more because they know that they will develop a disease or something that they are completely unaware of. And then there's on the other side of the spectrum, other people who are, are uh, either completely uh, uninformed and they're like, oh, I didn't know all this data. And other people who say, look, the data is going to be out there. It's already been out there for so many years. So uh, I don't mind because I get a service for free. Every time Google is using my data to make the system work better, I, I, and I get to use this system to stay in touch with my family and friends for free, then if that's the price I pay, I'm OK with it. And I didn't expect to find all oh, these very clearly defined uh, positions and all of the others in the middle. But clearly, um, this is a very early day and obviously we need to find a middle ground because when people get too scared they withhold data which if it was shared it could have a radical potential for accelerating innovation and solving problems and so on so we want people to share but at the same time we uh, need to be aware of the risks of doing that and it to mm, we need to set the conditions yeah. under which the true, data should true. be shared. But then again, it's, it's also an interesting uh, topic because it's, it's uh, uh, uncharted waters. Nobody really knows what the impact is of all this data and how to deal with it. So uh, if we want to 
make people aware of, of the impact of this data, uh, um, well, we have to find it out together because well, we don't know that as well. I mean, uh, um, only certain companies know the, the real value of the data, but we as simple consumers have no idea. This is why it is so important to do um, pilot interventions and, and to use participatory methods where people are uh, involved in the processes and people uh, get educated about that. If, I always say if, if data is going to be the new oil or soil, which is a massive pot of wealth, then what type of society we want? We want a society where this power is centralized in one institution, either corporate or, or public institution that makes decision on how to uh, trade with it or uh, distribute the wealth, or it should be a democracy where we directly participate or through representatives participate in deciding how, when, how we redistribute the value, the wealth created by this data. So you truly believe that is this uh, new data guideline or this new data legislation is actually improving democracy and, and, and creating decentralization uh, that is also benefiting uh, or beneficiary to people uh, in a broader range than just uh, uh, the data protection? I think that the, yes, the, the, the new legislation at the European level is very powerful and we need to harness its potential. Right, so uh, this new legislation is going to make the world a better place? Uh, hopefully, but as everything, the code is written and then it is up to us to step up and turn it into a, a powerful reality for right. the better of all. Right, well, good last, uh, last words. Thank you very much. Thank you. This was another talk uh, from uh, ThinksCon uh, 2017 from Amsterdam. We were live here with uh, Mara and we will be back soon with a new guest and we will be here all afternoon. Stay tuned. <laughs>